Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John DeYard. Welcome to Life Spa Podcast. And today we have a really special guest. Her name is Lauren Walker. She's the author of the just released book, The Energy to Heal, Finding Lasting Freedom from Stress and Trauma Through Energy Medicine Yoga, um, published by Llewellyn in, in this year, just in May. It's released 2022. In 2016, she was named one of the top 100 most influential yoga teachers in America. And for more of her work, you can find her at em, emyoga.net. That's emyoga.net. Lauren, it's so great to have you. Um, you know, here at LifeSpot, you're like a superstar. Everyone here loves you. Um, so we're all really fascinated to have you here and can't wait to dive into um you know, yoga medicine, uh, energy um, medicine, yoga, and what does that mean? And I think before we dive into that, I really want to today talk about, you know, how we can unravel some of the mental and emotional trauma that we all have, right? And the studies show that 95% of the things we think and say and do as young children, um, uh, or 95% or of the things we think and say and do as adults are from impressions from when we're, when we're younger than six years old. And Ayurveda says we kind of go through life sort of unconscious in that way. And the whole point of Ayurveda was to become conscious. And I always say that the human body is designed to perceive subtle energy in ways that no other instrument really can. But I feel like a lot of us don't really get that. Like, like I feel like that's what Ayurveda is about, is to refine this instrument so we can perceive the subtle, like, you know, the most powerful things in the universe, like, or in our world, the microbiome. You can't see it. Circadian rhythms, Nobel Prize winning science, you can't see it, but they regulate everything, right? But we don't tune into it. But I think this body is designed to feel it and appreciate it and live in sync and in harmony with it. And I, and, and I loved your book so much. I, I, I read it months ago when, when you first sent me the draft. And um, I think um, I love it. I think it's got so many practical applications. And so I'm super excited for you to demonstrate some stuff for us. But I'd love for you to start by telling us two things. One, how you got into that, and then you know, help people understand um, what that what that energy is and how it can actually help unravel some of those old emotional old you know emotional traumas that we all seem to carry and make us do the same dumb thing again and again for our entire life, right? So how do we break those patterns? Mm, mm, wonderful. Wow. Okay. That's, that's really big. And thank you. I am so happy to be here too. Um, you know, you are also uh, a rock star in the EM yoga world. We're constantly referring people to you. You have such a knowledge and wisdom that you share so freely. So it's just really beautiful to have the symbiosis together today. Um, so let's see. There's so much there to unpack. You know, you, you said that the 95% of those impressions come from when we're six and under. And then the other hit to that is that about 90 to 95% of our days, we're on autopilot, rethinking the same thoughts over and over and over again. We have very little new information that we process in our conscious minds. Of course, the unconscious is taking in everything, but we are stuck in sort of these cycles of repetition. And like you said, a lot of that repetition comes from um, childhood and not necessarily from, from good things. We tend to imprint and remember and, um, and aggregate the negative things, the challenging things, the difficult things, which is actually one of the hallmarks of trauma. Um, and stress is a little bit different, although they both interact in the body in the same way. And so physiologically, stress and trauma, same cascade of chemicals through the body. Um, but in terms of how you draw them to you, if you have had traumatic experiences in your life and you haven't released those energetic imprints, which you know, we tend to think of, of the mind and what we're thinking and our thought patterns, which is also a, a piece of the energy. But the energetic imprints are actually in these energy systems in the body. And if we don't release those, we draw more of them to us. And so we end up in what I call a field of trauma. We're just in this place where we keep drawing more and more trauma to us and we don't know how to release it. And that's what really this work is about. And, you know, you asked how I got into this work. So I studied yoga for years before I discovered my teacher, Donna Eden and Eden Energy Medicine, and then went down the energy field. And, you know, from Ayurveda, which is the sister science to yoga, 
that yoga is an energetic practice. I mean, it that's what it is. It's an energetic practice, but it's not really taught like that anymore in um, in the Western culture. It's very much a physical practice. And a lot of it is, I mean, now we're, at least we're moving into, you know, stress release and things like that, but it's been for a long time about uh, becoming more flexible or stronger, more muscular, uh, losing weight, all of these things, which are byproducts of using the body in a very specific way, but we're never the main intention of a yoga practice, of an asana practice. Uh, so I want to just clarify that as well, because there's many, many different parts of, of a yoga practice. So I learned that it was an energetic practice and there were certain things that I could feel that in, primarily the pranayama practice, which is the breathing practices. So if you really focus in and do very prescribed breathing practices, including holds and all of those sort of things, you can start to feel your body in a different physiological way. You can start to feel um, the energetic quality of your body. If you do a very strong asana practice, you can feel the energetic qualities of it in similar ways to I'm a big skier, right? So if I go skiing in a powder day all day and I'm really working hard and it's also amazingly fun, I feel that. I feel that thrumming. I feel that excitement. I feel energized. So that is what you can get from a yoga practice that's really strong physically. But you're not getting the subtle energy shifts, which is what the yoga practice is intended to do. And so I was learning these subtle yoga energetic ideas, but I wasn't feeling them. For example, um, the koshas is something that's taught very often, which is the layers of energy in the body. And I don't know how many classes and courses I took on koshas. And still to this day, I ask, I train yoga teachers and I say, who here has ever taught a class on how to feel the koshas? I have never had one person raise their hand because what what I have and most of the yogis that I've talked with experience is it's an intellectual idea that you have these layers, but it's not something that you can actually feel and tune into. So I just sort of thought, okay, well, yoga energetically is intellectual. I can either feel really energized or I might be kind of tired and that's really what energy is. And then I started working with energy medicine and it is not subtle. It is not subtle at all. It is actually right there in the clay and physicality of the body. It is in the fields that extend off the body and you can feel it. I mean, you can feel it like you can feel your own physical body. And once that happened for me, everything shifted. And I started to incorporate all of these techniques into the physical asana practices that I had been doing for years. And then whew, it just opened up. Because now all of a sudden I was feeling what the ancient yogis were talking about, because of course, energy medicine is ancient medicine as well. And so I was feeling it. I was feeling my meridians. I was feeling my chakras. I was feeling my aura. I was feeling these shifts and then experiencing them, how they reverberated out into my life, which is all of the things that yoga promises more happiness, more peace, contentment, santosha, relationships re resolving, everything shifts. And of course, what this book is about healing, trauma, and stress. So once you can feel your energy and you know how to work with it, you have an intimacy and a language with it, then you can start to unravel these things that were before just sort of intellectual ideas. Well, I've had a lot of trauma in my life. Oh, well, I guess I'll just do my coping pe mechanisms, which is whatever it is, eating, alcohol, drugs, shopping, sex, whatever it is that you do to stop yourself from the pain of that, those energies in your body that you don't really know how to identify and work with. So it really shifted everything for me. And, and once I started studying with Donna and started studying energy medicine, that has been my trajectory ever since. So I think people are, are, are just chomping at the bit to have that experience that you have how how do you feel you know in such a palpable sense that subtle energy is there you know a, a way that or you can tell us what did you do to feel it and can people mimic that i mean i even teach classes in that or are your students getting that same kind of like aha wow i can feel it now absolutely every em yoga class that i teach every i mean you can take em yoga classes online there's teachers all over the country all over the world that is the beauty of this practice and it is the kind of um 
it is the aha that everybody has. They take a class and I've had so many students and teachers say to me, I've been bored with yoga or I just got stuck with yoga, which is what happened to me. I was getting stuck in my trauma. Yoga wasn't helping anymore. And once they tap in and start to learn this language and and start to have even just a you don't need to have fluency you just need a few words right once you have a few words of this language of what the body speaks in then you have that wow and you are in a different relationship with your own body mind and spirit because it's not just the physical body it is and it's not just the mind energy is all that there is. So the physical body and the mind and the spirit or soul, however you language that, is all energy. That's all anything is. And so once you start to make that shift, then you have a totally different relationship, understanding and um, an experience with really with everything in your life. Like we practice on the mat, but it becomes everything. Wow. So, um... Is it possible for you to uh, give us all that wow, aha feeling like like now? Like give us a demonstration so people can actually taste it, maybe get a little glimpse of it? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I'll share with you the one of the things that I do in, um, in my um, kind of beginner classes to get people to, to feel their energy. And, you know, there's, there's many, many different techniques. So as I said, there's nine energy systems in the body and all of them have um access points on the physical body or just off the physical body and the easiest energy system to feel is actually the one that's been studied the most maybe second most uh, i think meridians have been studied quite a bit um is your aura so in science it's called the biofield because um when scientists actually realized that what the ancient traditions had been saying for years was true was in fact true they didn't like the word aura, it was too, I don't know, woo woo for them. So they came up with biofield, which sounds much more scientific, but it's the same thing. So it is this field that extends from the physical body, off the body, um, up to, it's been measured up to 15 feet off of the body. And your aura is kind of like your spacesuit. So it is what protects you from the environment. It keeps out environmental influences that aren't beneficial, but it also, it's not like a, um, like a, a plastic lid on a, on a container, right? That it keeps out all the other smells from your refrigerator or something from dropping into it. It also draws in. So it's a porous um, field that draws in experiences to you. And everything that's ever happened in the physical body was first present in the field, everything. So if you've got any dis-ease pattern in your body right now, it was present in the aura before it manifested in the physical body, which is why it's such a powerful system to work with but it's also really easy to feel. So um, I'm gonna show you this and you can all try it at home right now. And the, what I do request, and I have a ton of skeptics all the time that take classes from me and, and I'm good with that. And I will answer questions from the skeptics forever because I love it. Because once they flip, then they're the biggest advocates, right? Um, but what I ask is you just um, put your dogmas or your disbeliefs or your doubts to the side just for this time that we're together and just check this out and see what you come up with yourself so this one is really easy you're going to feel your aura and here's what you're going to do you're going to take your hands rub them together and then just shake them off and then you're going to bring your hands about the width of your arms extended across you can keep your eyes open or closed it doesn't matter and then you're going to start to draw your hands towards each other at some point, and you're gonna bring your awareness in between your hands. And at some point you're gonna feel like a little bit of density, like you're almost coming into a cloud. And you could be like, well, I don't know if I feel that, maybe not, and you're gonna keep going. And then you're gonna feel like, oh, that thing I felt isn't there anymore. And then keep going and you're like, oh, there's that thing that might be what she was talking about. No, I kind of doubt that that's it. And you're gonna push through and then you're like, oh, that's not there anymore. And then you're going to keep coming up to that. It's a very subtle resistance. But once you feel it, you're like, that's not so subtle, actually. Kind of like it's a marshmallow. I can really feel that. And then you can push through it. And then you come again to another layer of it. Because your aura has seven distinct layers. And each one of them, you can feel this little 
density, this resistance. Do you feel that, John? Yeah. And if you don't feel it, just shake your hands off again and bring them, and you don't have to bring them that far apart and just start again. And, and sometimes it does help to close your eyes so that you're not looking for something. Although this is one of the systems that if you're gonna to start to see energy, this is the one that people start to see first. And you just start to bring your hands together and there it is. And once you feel it, it's like, wow, you cannot deny that you're feeling something there because you can push through it and then you don't feel it anymore. And then there it is again. And for some of you that are a little bit more sensitive or maybe have worked with energy before, you might even start to feel some differences within that, some heat or some pulsations. Right. So there is your, your aura and it's really, really easy to feel. And once you feel it, then we do all these different things with it. So if you're depressed a lot or you feel um, really challenge, like going out into public. A lot of people say that they are, um, they're empathic, right? They feel so much energy coming at them. Often what that is, is that your aura is either isn't connected into the physical body or it's collapsed in and it isn't expanded out. So it's not protecting you because it's not wide enough in the field to actually um, give you that sort of your personal space. I mean, that's really what that is, right? Your personal space is taken up by your aura. And so once you feel that, then we do these techniques to make sure that your aura is connected into you and make sure that your aura is, we call it fluffing in and fluffing out, make sure it's fluffed out so that it's really taking up the full space of you. So, so that was great. Thank you. And, you know, the, um, from the Ayurvedic perspective, you mentioned a minute ago that, that um, these old emotional traumas that we experience as young children, they're, um, they're recorded in the white matter of our brain. Ayurveda says we feel it in our heart, sadhaka. They're carried to our brain through pranavata, and then they're written, scribed into the white matter of our brain as something called tarpaka kapha, which has to do with the, the impressions and the scribing of these old emotional patterns. So it's like if you were a kid and ran into a cave when you were 10 and the bear chased you out, you can be 99 years old and you're never going back into that cave because it's a species survival thing. So the idea is to create a level of heightened awareness so you can actually perceive um, the trauma as a trauma so the body can recognize the problem as a problem and then heal it and repair it. And um, so I wonder how do we take this awareness of our aura and this subtle energy and how do we use that awareness to create a level of heightened awareness uh, so you can begin to see the problem as a problem and create a spontaneous healing effect. You have a scab, you cut your finger, you have a scab, you don't think scab, 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 it's an involuntary process. So this would seem to be an involuntary process. All you need to do is enhance the awareness. And what you just did definitely gave us a glimpse that, oh yeah, I can enhance that awareness, I can feel it. But now how do I use that in a way to, to create, um, you know, to direct it to these places where the emotional trauma lives? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that's a great question. And, you know, one of the things that, that I do in terms of healing trauma, there's sort of two tracks to it. There is one that you've just mentioned, which is about bringing that to consciousness, raising your awareness about it, raising your consciousness about it so that you can then direct healing specifically. And that we do with very um, specific exercises. There's a lot of writing exercises and, and working with the conscious mind to retrieve things that are in the unconscious mind and then bring those two in alignment because that's a lot of the trauma is that there's a split, there's this disconnect um, between the unconscious, which knows that you are pure love, right? And then the conscious, which have the trauma, which for most of us, then that hit of love that we think that we are, becomes um, deranged or becomes distorted because of whatever experience we went through. So there's a conscious way of working with it. And I was going to say, but, but I'm going to say, and how we work with it in energy medicine yoga is on the level of the unconscious, because a lot of our trauma happened to us. You mentioned six and under. So my parents got divorced when I was three. 
my, I know from stories that I had a lot of trauma around that, but consciously, I don't remember any of it. I was three and, and so I don't know any of that, but it is held in my body. And so I could do a lot of work to try to bring back memories from six, five, four, three, two, or I could work with the energy which once you start to release it releases that trauma without you having to go back to the story so not only is if your trauma happened in a pre-verbal precognizant way but also a lot of our trauma is something that we don't want to revisit consciously because it is harrowing it is i mean a lot of us have had experiences traumatic experiences that we can't even don't want to talk about go back to and you know talk therapy or and desensitization therapy right it's all about like tell me your story a thousand times well oh my god if i told you my story once you would be a puddle on the floor i wouldn't anymore but for years i would have been a puddle on the floor and that's not really helping either one of us but certainly not me who was the trauma person to resolve my trauma and so what we do is we work with the trauma from the energetic level you don't have to tell the story and the way one of the powerful most powerful ways is working with that in the chakras because your chakras are the hard drive of your energy systems and so they record everything you talked about the tarpica kapha and the brain taking those recordings but it's also recorded in each chakra depending on where your trauma was if you had a, um, a sexual trauma it might be in the first or second chakra if you um had you know a, a heartbreak trauma it would be in the fourth chakra so we work with that and release the energies, uh, the traumatic energies from the chakra. You don't ever have to go back and think about the story. And once you release the energy, the story is then just the story. And then you can just tell the story and the charge is no longer there. You've, you've interrupted that limbic loop and you've rewritten the, that stress response that's attached to that trauma. And so that's really where we spend a lot of our time. And, you know, uh, let me just kind of go uh, one little angle on this. You know, in yoga, we often hear the issues are in the tissues. So people will be doing an asana class and stretching some area of their body and all of a sudden have a stress response or a trauma reaction. They've been, something was triggered, not even a thought because they're not thinking anything. They're in a yoga class, downward dog, upward dog, you know, here's the pose that you're doing now. And all of a sudden they break down in tears sobbing. Why? Because they opened something up in the physical body that was a receptacle for the trauma. In other words, the trauma got jammed into the physical body because at the time the person didn't have the tools to release that energy. So energy has to go somewhere. It goes into the physical parts of the body and it gets stuck there. And then you do this pose, you stretch, you open up, and that energy gets released. And so how do we deal with that? And that's where we, what we really look at. We don't, we're not so focused on the story because oftentimes telling the story just re-cements that trauma response in the body. So that's what, we're, that's what we're working with. So not so much about bringing it to consciousness, but bringing it energetically and releasing the energy of that so that that spin goes spinning off into out of your body, out of your energy systems, and then just resolves back into the field of everything, into the ether where energy, where everything is just energy. I, I love that, you know, because otherwise you're just being dragged, you know, through the emotional mud again and again and again, and and uh, and you keep just getting stuck in that. And and you know, from the Ayurvedic perspective, there's a technique in Ayurveda called Marma and we use this technique that you gave us and the idea is that you know once you start to feel this feel um in Ayurveda you would actually put your hands over the marmas in the body sort of like like this and um and then the, in the in interesting instruction that we give is very simple is we would tell the therapist to put their attention so I mean when when you do this you feel it where do you feel it you feel it on your hands, that's where you're feeling it. So you're feeling yourself, your aura in your hands. Then you put your hands over somebody's body and, you, and the instruction for the therapist is put your attention on your hands where you feel yourself. So you put your hand, now you have somebody's body in the middle there, but you're still putting your attention on yourself. And the instruction for the therapist, for the person on the table would be to put their attention in the area between my two hands. So they're putting their attention on themselves. 
and we're putting our attention as a therapist on ourselves. I'm not doing any healing. All I'm doing is creating a field of awareness where I can interact and be more self-aware of myself, the truth of myself. Ayurveda, Ayurveda is life, Veda is truth. It means the truth of your truth of your the truth of your life. Really, is what it means. So you become more self-aware, and when you become more self-aware of the truth, then that can actually um, become your reality. That, from the kosha perspective, happens at the junction point between the uh, the anandamaya kosha and the, the wisdom sheath of the yanamaya kosha, which are sort of unmanifest in a way. And then there's the mental sheath. And then in between there is what they call it the great barrier sheath. That's the wall that keeps us from experiencing our truth. So you, know, you have your pranamaya kosha, which is the yoga and the the Anamaya Kosha, the body, which is Ayurveda 101, the prana, which is the, you know, the subtle energy, and the mind and all the emotions. And once you purify all those, you become more aware of the junction between, between field and physiology, which is the unmanifest Anamaya Kosha and the Yanamaya Kosha and the mind. And at that junction point, the Great Barrier Sheath, when you put your attention there, it's like a lamp at the door. You have the awareness of both manifest the, the density of the physiology of holding on to the emotional trauma. And because you're at the junction now, you're at the awareness of the bliss, of the truth, of the joy. And from there, you can heal. And that goes into subtle energy because biofields or biophotons, which are photons of light, which are both particle and wave, they exist as both particles, which are manifest, and waves, which are unmanifest. So in Ayurveda, the cause of disease is when the field becomes physiology and the physiology forgets that it's part of the field. And so we bring our attention to that level. So what you just described is going, oh my God, that's exactly what we do in our data. We try to get these techniques to get people to go to that field. It's way beyond thought and, and the, the manifest trauma. You're, you've dropped to a place where you're becoming aware of, of the energy of density and the energy of light and love. And then once you have that awareness of both, the, we, we, the, the techniques that I'm sure you're going to teach us today are going to help to restore that, that the, um, the memory of pure consciousness into the physiology. And that's what it's about, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's so beautiful. This is why I love talking to you because we, we're, we're on the same, uh, uh, the same wavelength to, you, to use the terminology that you just said. But I, I want to say something about, about what you just said about having the person on the table with the body between the field. Because this is one of the things that we do to, to heal the aura. So any trauma that you've had will appear in the aura as little tears or holes or rips. And so you think about this. If you're wearing, again, back to my skiing metaphor, right? Uh, if you're wearing a ski coat and it's got holes in it, then every time it snows or rains or the wind blows, it's just blowing through and freezing you. It's not really protecting you. And the same thing in your field. If you have trauma, then you're going to have little tears all over your field. And those come from any kind of trauma that you've had and stress, but things like um, getting yelled at by somebody, eating sugar. I mean, things like that create these little holes and tears in the field. Okay, so great. We know that. We know we have trauma. There's these hair, tear, tear, tears in the field. They often appear at the level of the chakra. So remember, that's the hard drive. That's where everything is remembered. So they peer at that level, right? So I was yelled at by, you know, my boss or by my dad or something. That might be in my, um, well, it'd probably be in my third chakra area, but I, I'm thinking like, I think about that, right? So it's going to be maybe in my sixth chakra or even in my fifth chakra. Right? So wherever that, that hit appeared to me, it's going to be at that level in the field. So I've got all these t holes in my field. Now, when you did this, you could feel that you were kind of coming through those different layers, right? Remember, there's seven layers. But so where are those holes and tears? Those are going to also feel like that emptiness. So when you felt the aura, so here I am, I can feel that layer of the aura. So I can go out from my body and I can come back and I can feel that layer. But then if I'm sensitive enough, I'm going to give you two things here, because if I'm sensitive enough, I can feel that there is a hole. Like right here, here's this, actually it's going to be this way, right? Because I'm going around my body. So I'm going to go this way and I hit, feel the field. And then all of a sudden there's like the no field. Well, why is that? Because there's a tear in the aura. 
And so how am I going to fix that? So now here's the beautiful thing about energy medicine. So you talked about that both hands of the practitioner coming through and this work can be done with a practitioner, but I like to do, I like to do as much as I can by myself, right? So this is work that you can do just by yourself. You don't need anybody else uh, or any other energetic input. So I feel that there's this hole in the aura. I want to weave that hole back together. And that's really all I'm going to do. So I'm going to do either circles. And I always think back to Ram Dass polishing the mirror. I think this is what he meant, even though that's not what he was actually talking about. This is what he meant. You're polishing the mirror. You're, you're fixing the fields. You're fixing your tears in your aura. And maybe right now what I'm fixing is some cancer that in five years or 10 years is going to manifest in the physical form. Like you said, wavelength into, um, into matter, but maybe now I'm taking it out of the broken wavelength. So I'm either going to do circles or I'm going to do figure eights. Figure eights are the most predominant uh, ge geometric pattern in the universe and the most predominant in your body. The more figure eight patterns you have in your different fields, the healthier you are. And the healthier you are, the more figure eight patterns that you have. And so any kind of injury you have in your body, you, you know, you hurt your elbow, you're going to draw little figure eights over it and help that energy reconnect back together. But I'm going to do this now in the field. So here I am, I'm, I'm fixing this tear. And then um, you can, you can sing the, the Beatles song. I'm fixing a hole where the rain comes in. Right? So I'm going to fix all these tears all around my field. So that's great. I can feel them. I can see them. I can move out. I can move in. I've got all these layers. But you're saying, yeah, but you know what? I didn't feel that. I get that you're saying it's the easiest field to fix, but to feel, but I did not feel my aura. So what do I do? Am I, that's it? I can't fix my, no, it doesn't matter. You can just go and give yourself these figure eights all in your field, which is part of what we do in EM yoga, which now again is part of why if you're a skeptic, you're going to be like, oh my God, there's that lady up there doing her crazy dancing up there. Okay. You can think that all you want, but if you start to do this work, that's when the skeptics turn around and they're like, oh, everything changed. I don't know what I did, but I started to do these things and then I'm sleeping better. I'm not fighting with my spouse anymore. Uh, my job got better. I, I have way more energy. I don't know what's going on. I can't feel anything or see anything, but I'm going to keep doing it. So these are the ways, whether you feel the energy or you don't. And the more you start to practice this, it's like if you're learning another language, you know, first you have like, cerveza, hola, but then you start to practice it enough and all, all of a sudden you're like, hola, yo estoy Lauren, donde esta usted, right? You can start to, you put words together and then somebody speaks and you're like, I understood that because you're starting to have this intimacy and it just starts to happen. You start to feel these things that previously you might not have. Wow. Wow. So, you know, it sounds to me like that, you know, the, treating your aura is, I'm sure, the tip of the iceberg, right? I'm sure it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And in your book, you talk about the five elements and how each of the five elements um, relate to an underlying, you know, emotion or a possible issue or a possible emotional trauma and how you have different techniques to unravel uh, those. And you also have a body, a questionnaire, which I filled out um, to figure out my, uh, my dominant um, element. And, and all of that. And uh, I don't know, I'm pretty close to everything. I'm like 21 water, 21 wood, 19 fire, 15 earth, and uh, 18 metal. So I guess my dominant is water and wood, right? But yeah. The, those fires right there and metals right there. So I think I have all of the issues. Well, you know, and it's not surprising to me, actually, that you're very balanced because you've been doing this work for many, many years. And it's, you know, Ayurveda is about bringing yourself into balance. So that's not a surprise to me. Um, however, um, no matter how balanced you are, you always have a, pro a, a, a dominant and maybe a secondary um, a secondary uh, element. And so I, I was thinking before you said what you were, I was kind of wondering, hmm, I never really thought about what I think John is, but what do I think he is? I definitely think that wood would be predominant. You have a business that is very successful. You're a teacher. You are um, a truthist. You're a, a kind of a warrior of the heart, right? All of those things, you're, you're very passionate about, about fairness and equality, and, um, and you get things done. Like, look at your website to see that you get things done. Look at how much you've done, all the books you've written, all the work you do in the world. That is a wood element. 
the the water element will be um, the oh, the, the Nagad wood is the one who dreamed up all of these ideas. You're you're in your connection to the philosophy. Philosophy is all about water, the big ideas, the dreamers. So when you're, you know, just de de deciding to become an Ayurvedic doctor and you write about this in your books, and I love this story, you know, you were a triathlon, a triathlete and you were like, but I'm tired all the time and I keep working harder and it's not working. And so you were sort of dreaming up like, what is wrong? And you weren't just thinking, well, I, I should take these supplements, they'll help me. You were really kind of in the realm of like, what what could it be what could what could i find well, how could i expand my consciousness even though you might not have been using that terminology so that's not surprising to me that you are a wood and uh, a water i'm a little surprised that metal is not higher because metal is all about um organization and uh and i know how organized you are in detail um detail oriented that you, that you are um, but that, you know, you still have that in you. You're, it's not like it's like a, a, a 10 or something like that. But that's not surprising to me. That really, that makes sense that you're a wood water. And I'm also a wood water. So I, I, can, I can understand that. I sort of resonate with, with, um, with the things that, that, you, that you speak of as well. Huh. Okay. So um, let's use me as an example. And, and uh, so I'm a mess. I have a lot of wood and a lot of water. I have a good amount of 18 metal. I've got 19 fire that's probably not good um so so what would you do what would you do to me to help me um you know unravel my issues and then i, I was hoping that maybe you could even demonstrate like first talk about let's talk about what each of those elements do energetically and emotionally and then maybe we can talk about some strategies to fix them so people can have like okay i have anger issues you know, what can I do to fix that? And you can give us a couple of tips. This is great, by the way. People are going to love this. And by the way, this is all in her book, her new book just released. You got to get pick up this book. You fill out the questionnaire, you fill it out, tells you what practices do for, for each of the elements to unravel your emotions, basically to give you that heightened self-awareness so you spontaneously heal. You don't have to be dragged through the emotional mud. You don't have to think, you know, I did this and it might and carry the shame and the blame for the rest of your life. It's not like that, you know, the body is love and only thing that's lacking is letting it out, you know, and it's been trapped. And what this is really about is perceiving subtle energy in a way that allows us to experience the truth of us, the Ayurveda of us. So, so, um, yeah, maybe first you can start by giving us a little description of what each of the elements are like from an emotional perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to do that. And, and I want to emphasize what you just said, because that really is, um, if not the crux point, one of the essential pieces of healing anything is loving of the self, true, deep loving of the self. And if you've gone through trauma, chances are that that has been diminished in some way, that that has been either completely wiped out from your knowledge or that you uh, don't have access to it any longer, or you don't believe it to be true, that you are worthy of love. And if you don't love yourself, it is really impossible. I wanna go out on a limb and say that. It is impossible to completely heal because part of the healing is to love yourself. And so some of the techniques that we do in this, in this book are to come back into love with yourself because I was a prime example of that through the traumas that I went through. I, I hated myself. I mean, hated it. And when I started to try to fall back in love with myself, it was like, I would try to find one thing, just one thing that I could just like, forget about love. I just, what could I like? And it was just starting small. Like I would look in the mirror and I would just loathe everything I saw. And I'd be like, okay, eyebrows. Okay. I got, I got good eyebrows. I, I like my eyebrows. Like some days that was it. Okay, so I just want to let you know that that is a piece of the work that we're doing here, that love is the place where the healing will scoop you up and hold you and, and bring you to the, the beautiful life that you deserve and that is waiting for you and that I want to help you get there because I know that it's not always easy and um, and there's techniques and tools it's not just like. You have to go love yourself. Like, what does that mean? I don't, how can I? I I'm gonna give you really actionable tools to do that because it's important. It's the most important thing. Okay, so the five elements. So each element, um, this is kind of the umbrella and I'm just gonna give you the thumbnail, right? But this is the umbrella that there's these five basic emotions. Obviously there's tons more than that, but there's these five basic emotions and that every experience we have has a little bit of each one of those in there. And that 
each of those emotions brings us information, right? It brings us a piece of information of the story and that we need that piece of information so that we can release the trauma, release the story and be free from it. And so, um, so that's the path of this book is, is for whether you have one trauma that you're dealing with or just every everyday experiences, right? We, we get angry, we get upset, we get annoyed every day and each of them has a little piece of this in them. So the water element is where all healing starts. Everything starts in water, right? That is the, um, the fluid from which we came and it's the quantum uh, ability of everything. And so in water, the out of balance emotion is fear. And we balance that with courage. I'm just kind of going to go through these so that we can get time to do a practice. So if you want to go deeper into these, then, then you should definitely get my book. So, um, so that's water. Okay. And, I, and I give you in the book too, like the archetypes, like I talked about with you, um, the, the philosopher, the dreamer, the king, right? That's all water elements. So you can start to look at the archetypes and, and see what you are. But if you're also not sure, it's like, what is your stress response? So when you are stressed out, is fear your first response? If so, it's likely that you're a water element. The next element is wood. And out of balance, wood is anger. And we counter that with assertive action. So I'm a wood element. And literally every single thing that slightly knocks me off center, anger is my first response. Every single thing, it's anger. And now I know that. So instead of beating myself up for it, I'm like, okay, I take a pause. I'm angry about that. Okay, what can I do to transform that, to take assertive action? But this isn't just intellectual. I'm going to show you a little technique because when you're angry or afraid, it's not like, okay, let me sit down and what do I do with this fear, right? It's a visceral thing. So I want to give you visceral tools. So that's okay. water and wood. And then the next one is fire. And out of balance or challenging of fire is anxiety, right? Which we have a lot of in the world right now. And we balance that with inspiration and joy. So that's how you bring in, so you mitigate that anxiety. What can you, how can you be inspired to overcome whatever it is that you're anxious about? The next one is earth. And that out of balance is worry and thinking about everybody else. What do they think about this situation? What do they think about me? What are they saying about me? What's going on in their lives? It's like that little bitty body, busy body. That's always like, what's going on everywhere else? And the antidote for that or coming into balance, here's that crux piece, it's self-love, it's self-love. I'm gonna focus back on myself, I'm gonna love myself completely, and then that spreads out. And I'm, then I'm gonna be in community, then I'm gonna be in joy, then everything is gonna come from there. And then the last uh, element on the wheel is metal. And out of balance metal or the challenging emotion of metal is grief. And so you'll know people, maybe you've even been one of these that is grieving for something, a loss or a, um, a something, someone harmed you or something that you're just, you, you're grieving. It's actually more than, than being harmed. It's really, it's a, it's a loss and that you can't let that go. And the antidote for that is letting go, but also faith. It's that faith. It's that there's a bigger picture. I might not be privy to it, but I have faith that it is there and that there's a, that there's a bigger story here. And that's, um, that's a challenging one. Metal is often the most challenging one because it's really hard in the face of loss to see that there's a bigger picture. And certainly when you have a loss, you never want to hear like, well, there's a bigger picture. There's a reason why that all happened. You're like, oh, you know, my, my dog just died. Don't tell me that there's a better reason for that. But in time, and that's what metal is. It's about harvesting wisdom. And in time, you can see and, and the more that you practice these, then the, the easier it is to, to, to come into that antidote and to come into that balance. Again, not just intellectually, but energetically, energetically. And the more you work with the energy, the intellect is, you know, it's kind of like the, it's like the least smart part of your whole system, Re really. The brain is the least smart part of you. And so when you let that go and you let the smart part of you take over the energy and the physical body take over and do the work there, 
then the mind and the brain comes along and it's like, oh, I'm free, but you're already free, right? Because you felt that freedom. So that's sort of the, that's the, the quick trip around the wheel. Wow, that's beautiful. You know, I love how human you are and how, you know, self-deprecating you are and how, you know, because everyone has these issues. I'm sure a lot of folks look in the mirror and go, oh, you know, what can I do to make this better? Or, or don't love themselves. And I just think it's really neat because from the outside in, you look like you have it all together. You te- I mean, obviously you surely do these days. And I'm sure it's always a work in progress. That's the beautiful thing. These, these karmas that are opportunities, they ripen like fruit on the tree and they ripen in sequence. So it's always an opportunity to, uh, to grow and expand deeper. And there's an old saying, one of my favorites, that says to the extent that something or someone affects you, you see the extent that it's your karma, which means action. So it means to the extent that something affects you, it means an opportunity for us to take transformational action and free ourselves. And I think what you just listed was these emotions that are linked to these elements, you know, fear and anger and anxiety and all these things. And obviously those things will affect you, you know. And, and then once you become aware of the fact that they're affecting you and you have the, the subtle energy which provokes that awareness, it gives you the opportunity to take transformational action. Like we have door number one and door number two. Door number one is what you've done for the rest of your life is you respond to your anger, your, your, your fear with anger and worry and you know, all these things that you've been doing, the same dumb thing. But as you become using this subtle energy to bring your body into more awareness, you begin to see door number two begin to appear, which is an opportunity to take a different action, go down a different road and take transformational action, which you said, like you, you can act on joy, you can act on inspiration, you can act on self-love, you can, you can act on these things, you can do it both in a, in a, in a um, you know, kind of an overt way, we're actually just taking action, random acts of kindness in, in those kinds of ways, but it's also happening at a subtle level. And I think that's what I think you're talking about, and I think that would be kind of really neat if you could share some, some demonstrations of, how you do the practices which are activating the subtle. So from the inside out, you're creating that level of awareness of door number two. And from the outside in, the, the action steps that you took, which are definitely in her book, she gives you practices and you gotta take the questionnaire because it tells you like who you are and it's just kind of really a neat process. And then it's just so easy when the way that Lauren's put this thing together. So you, you really ought to you know, pick up this book, um, take the questionnaire, follow it and then um, become a fan. I've, we've become a fan at Lifespot of Lauren's work. It's quite amazing. So what do you think? Is that doable? Absolutely, absolutely. So what I'll do is I will show you, and um, I love that you keep using the word subtle, but I wanna kind of rebut that a little bit because what you're gonna see me do right now is not subtle at all. So these are big movements. And that is really um, the piece that I found so um, so joyful, to be honest, in this work is that I, for a long time, I, uh, I've, I'm very sensitive, but I didn't understand and I didn't that, that sensitivity to that subtleness that you're talking about, because I'm not a subtle person at all. I'm like the antithesis of subtle. And so I always struggled with that. I don't feel these subtle energies. I don't understand these subtle energies. And when I started studying this work, it's like it's right there to feel. It's not, um, it, it's not subtle. It's very overt. These are big movements and they are moving this energy out of the body. And so um, that's what I love about them. They're accessible to do, and you don't have to, you don't have to be a yogi. A lot of this work uh, I do on the mat within the context of a full asana practice, but they certainly can be taken off the mat, like what I'm gonna show you right now. And the, these are tools that you can use anytime and anywhere. And they're really, um, I'm just going to show them to you because I think that will make more sense than than if I keep talking about them. So I'm going to jump over into my studio right here. <clears throat> okay. So um, so what I'm going to share with you is the the five. These are the peak poses. So these are the movements to transmute the challenging emotion to its counterpart to its balancing emotion. And you're gonna hear me also make sound because each element, these, these sounds come from ancient Chinese medicine. So each, okay, I gotta unpack this a little bit for you. Each element has, five element theory encompasses everything, everything on the planet, every 
uh, emotion that you experience, every experience in your life, every physiological part of your body, the seasons, they, it actually mean the elements are about movement. It's not a fixed thing. Um, they were called walks or rhythms because it's about movement, right? Your life is a movement. You're never fixed in one point. Even when you're sleeping, your body is doing trillions of things. So you're never still, nothing is ever fixed. And so these, um, each element has two or more organs that it governs. And these sounds help to move energy in those organ systems, which are where these challenging emotions are held. So you've maybe heard that like anger is held in your liver, right? Well, the wood element, which governs your anger, governs the liver and the gallbladder, which is where you've heard before in, in yoga classes that anger is held. In the kidneys, you've heard before, I'm putting my hand here at the kidneys, right? Kidneys hold fear. Well, kidneys are governed by the water element, which is that fear element. Okay, so um, I, I'm not gonna tell you all the five element theory because it would take the rest of our lives, but I just want you to know that so that these sounds that I'm gonna make are helping to move that emotional energy into its balanced counterpart. Okay, so again, all of this is in the book and you can watch this video over and over again so that you can, so you can get these. And um, I'm not gonna show you all of the variations, but if, if you have any physical limitations, you can do these practices no matter what. So you can do all of these practices seated in a chair. You can do them all lying down in bed. If you can't move at all, if you have some kind of um, physical um, limitation that you're in a wheelchair or you can't move or you're in a hospital bed, you can visualize these practices and the energy will still move. And there's a lot of really beautiful experiences that we've had um, with people that, that can't move but have moved their energy. So no, um, there's no reason that you can't do all of this. But as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna show you kind of the, the root of them. I'm gonna show you how they, how they um, appear in their sort of archetypal way. And then you can make adjustments as your physicality requires. So I'm gonna start in water, in a squat, one hand around my knees, one hand forward to counterbalance. The sound for the water element is W-H-O. So every exhale I make is gonna have that sound. So if you have fear, this is the pose that you're gonna do. You're gonna drop your head and then you're gonna inhale. So that's it. That's for moving the fear out of the body. And like I said, you can do that lying down on your back, hugging your knees into your chest and blowing it out. And that's called blowing out the candle. And it's about the, that you are the light within. And so you don't need the flame without. You blow out the candle and with that blowing out the candle, you are lighting your inner flame. And that's the courage that you have within you all the time. So that's for water. For wood, the one that I've practiced the most, it's called expelling the venom. This is how toxic anger is to the body. It's called venom. So we wanna expel the venom. And the sound that you're gonna make with that is S-H, shh. Like you're getting the shh out of you, right? Okay, so all you're gonna do, you're gonna bend your knees, reach down. If you can reach down to the ground, I like to visualize that I'm pulling up the weeds in the garden that don't serve me anymore. I'm going to pull them up, swing my arms up overhead. And then with that sound, I'm going to go shh and throw them down to the earth. We're going to do that two more times. Shh. Shh. And last one, really slow. What's that last thing that you're so mad about? Shh. And then just shake it off. And there it is. You've just gotten that venom out of the body. You've moved that energy out of the body. And you can feel it. If you're angry right now, do that. And you can feel it. All of a sudden you're like, huh, I just released something because you did. Okay. Fire. This is called bringing down the flame. So you think about anxiety and the metaphor that I use is a wildfire. Sadly, we have just had, you have had down where you are, um, John, down in Colorado, these crazy wildfires that burned out of control. 
And the goal is, is to seat that fire into each chakra that it resides in so that you can come back into centered, into groundedness and bring the fire into where it's a flame to warm you and to feed you and to nurture you instead of burning out of control and having that anxiety. And that is all in your field. So we're actually going to scoop that out of the field. The sound for this is H A. And you're going to see me touch every chakra except the throat. I'll explain that in another class or another podcast that we do, but we're not going to come to the throat chakra. So it looks like this. Now I'm just pinking the pinkies to the pubic bone. Flatten the hands over the first three chakras. And then one more breath there. I'm just going to sweep down and shake it off. And I mean, it's really amazing to do these and to talk to you at the same time because it's, I, you can't do them and not feel them. So everything is just now, okay, so I got to shake that off so I can do the next thing. Okay, so the next one that we're going to do is earth, right? And this is worry going into self-love. The sound for this is the ujjayi breath, which is the yogic breath. It's a little bit of a compression at the back of the throat and the glottis at the back of the throat. Sometimes it's called the Darth Vader breath. And if you don't know the breath, if you um, like fog up your a mirror, like hold your hand in front of your mouth and then just close your mouth. It's that little bit of compression at the back of the throat. And that is for increasing self love. So you're going to wrap your hands around your body. You can hold the elbow or you can just have both hands on the body and you're just going to rock yourself back and forth and you're going to breathe with that sound. Then I'm going to still my hands, bring arms up overhead, hold your breath and pull down four times. Start to exhale and smooth behind your ears three times. Arms come out to the side, sweep them all the way out and down. Now bend your knees as much as you need to so that you can bring your hands underneath your feet. Drop your head down, just relax here. Again, you can have your knees as deeply bent as you want. You're gonna inhale, pull up, hands pulling under the feet, start to flatten the back a little bit. Exhale, surrender down two more times. Now release your hands and you're gonna smooth your hands up the inner legs, all the way up the body to the side ribs, and then just come back to that hug again. That's earth. Okay, shake that off. Okay, the last one is metal. Moving out of grief into faith and letting go. Every sound here is with an S. So these are back bends and you're going to engage the front body, engage the belly to protect the low back. You don't have to bend back very far and you can, if that feels good to you. If you have no neck issues, you can lift the head all the way back, but I like to just tilt it slightly. Again, you don't want to create any stress or tension in the neck. I'm going to turn to the side so that you can see what I'm going to do. Hands start on the thighs. Let's just take an exhale here. First inhale, arms are at the waist level. Exhale, you're going to bring your arms together in front of the body like you're holding a beach ball, but the hands don't touch. So I'm going to do that again with the sound, but I just want you to know, hands are coming together, but they don't touch, okay? Next inhale, shoulder height.
next inhale overhead now the arms touch slide down the arms hands rest over the upper chest three more exhales Take it off. Okay, that's it. You should feel just beautiful and peaceful and just really balanced right now. Wow, <clears throat> thank you. That was amazing. Um, I think people are gonna be so grateful. I mean, to have that little tutorial, what a gift, really. Thank you so much. That's a, that was a lot. And I think, um, I'd imagine, can people just go through that routine you just went through? Would that be like a, just a good fix the five element theory practice? Yeah, absolutely. And actually it's called, when you put them all together, it's called the five element flow. And um, I, I, I actually have a companion course coming out with the book called The Energy to Heal. And in one of those practices, you'll you'll see, I mean, you can do each of those together, but there's little bits that link them together. And I and I explain a lot more about um, the emotional components of each. But yes, you absolutely can do all of those together in a flowing practice, a little mini vinyasa. And um, and just, you know, the thing about our emotions are so instructive, but they're also they can be disruptive. And so if you have a way every day to release the emotions that aren't serving you then you're going to be less stressed and emotions undigested unresolved emotions is the number one cause of stress and stress is the number one cause of disease so you could say that unresolved emotions are the number one cause of disease and every experience you have brings up all of these five emotions and in order to not let that come into what you said from the wave into the particle of the disease part of the body you need to put them back into the waveform and release them out into the ether and that's what this practice does wow so this is a really a wonderful roadmap so for folks you know they get to be able to kind of tune into these elements and kind of track you know how their 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 imbalances and emotions are manifesting in their physiology and then and um and then do these practices to to release them i i think it would be great if you could repeat for everybody you know because we talked about how these emotions are stored in the tissues they're stored in the white matter of the brain we hold on to them for dear life it's sort of our species survival thing how does the body know what what emotions are okay to let go of? Like, you know, like I don't ever want to go back into that cave where the bear chased me out, but I don't need to, you know, drag through the emotional mode of the trauma I went through as a child because I'm it, that that fear has been long gone. But the memories are still there. We have these like pre-recorded stress responses waiting to to express themselves based on a stress that we may incur during the day or going home for the holidays and we experience these kind of acting like a four-year-old again. And, and um, so I, I wonder if you could, you know, help us, help us know two things. You know, one, how, how do you differentiate between the, I guess you don't do it intentionally, it just happens automatically, but, you know, there's these, these, these emotional memories that we hold on to, which are probably good to keep, you know, sort of species survival stuff. And then there's the stuff that we don't need that we can discard. And I'd love for you just to go over it again. I think it's worth repeating the mechanism of how this works to, unravel those 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 emotions because we all know it's this crazy mind of ours that plows through our physiology and makes us mentally and emotionally you know unwell as well as physio physiologically you know age faster and degenerate faster we just don't need to go there and you're giving us a solution from the most subtle which is what ayurveda is really about it's the subtle manifesting into the dense and then the dense the you know the physiology becoming so dense that it can't function and you're you're enlightening us in a in a beautiful way. So if I could, I just want to hear you say it all again, you know, in a, in another way, because I, I want people to really get this, you know. Yeah. 
Well, you know, emotions give us information. They give us information. And when we're wise, then we use that information in a wise way. And by increasing our energetic wisdom, then we are able to harvest the information from the emotions while letting the energy of the emotion go. We don't ever have to hold the energy of the emotion. And you've talked about before, and maybe I'm going to bring Ram Das again he, um, back in, and he says, you know, if you want to know how uh, enlightened or evolved you are, go home and spend a weekend with your family, right? Because that's all of your triggers. Well, if you have worked on releasing all of the energy of the emotions, you don't have to go back to all of these triggers. You go back, clean slate might be a little, but that's what you talk about, right? With the Tarpaga Kapha is cleaning that slate so that it's clear. And so if you went back, you know, you go to, uh, you, you bring a friend to your family a gathering, right? And they're like, oh, I love your mom. She's amazing. And you're like, are you serious? Right? Or that cousin, oh my God, I had so much fun talking to him. You're like, really? He's the one that drives everybody mad, but he didn't drive your friend mad. Why? Because your friend didn't have all those triggers in. So imagine if you cleared the emotions of all those triggers or the, excuse me, the energy of all those emotional triggers, then you could see your cousin and be like, huh, that dude's really cool, you know, or wow, he's a little quirky, but doesn't bother me because I don't have any skin in the game. So that's really what it is. It's like you're clearing those. Now you still have your intellectual awareness. You can still look at that cave and be like, I remember the bear was in that cave. I'm not going to go in that cave, which is different than the bears in that cave. Ah! And then you've got that whole stress response and you're back into PTSD. That's what PTSD is, is that the trigger causes the exact same physiological response as the initial incident. It's not serving you. It's not keeping you any safer. In fact, it's breaking you down because you've got too much cortisol in the body and too much epinephrine in the body and your body can't clear it and it starts to break down all of the tissues of the body. But the intellectual knowledge that you've gained from that event you're not losing that. All you're losing is the negative cascade of stress chemicals through the body. Your story is still your story. You can clear all of your traumas. And, you know, I feel pretty good at this point in my life, but I've cleared all of my, I want to say that, I'm going to say that. I've cleared my traumas. Once I learned about the field of trauma and that what that meant was that there was a field where that trauma wasn't that I could resolve that field and bring that field into coherence. It didn't change the stories of my life. I could tell you each, I just said, you know, my parents got divorced when I was three. I had to unplug my dad from life support system when I was 23 years old. He was 49 years old. I had to pull the plug on my dad. I can tell you that right now in just that kind of a way. Whereas maybe 10 years ago, I would be sobbing and I would tell you the scene in the hospital room and how it affected me and how my whole life has been, you know, such a challenge without a dad. But now it's just, that's a piece of my story. And there's more traumas that are even worse than that. And I could just list them off and just tell you what they are because that's my story. But they don't send me into stress response anymore. They don't send me into trauma response anymore because those triggers have been released from my body. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, beautiful sense. You know, um, I, I kind of don't want this to end, so I'm going to keep going, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, because um, you gave us so much, you know, I'm being a little bit selfish to ask for more. But, um, you know, from the Ayurvedic perspective, and I did a lot of research on and wrote a lot of articles about pranayama and breathing techniques. And what I noticed was the common denominator for all the pranayama breathing techniques was something called neuroplasticity, you know, changing those old emotional patterns. And I was really struck by, you know, that's what the whole thing was about, right? It was about using prana to raise the vibration, to create a level of clarity, to, to, to um, have that ability to be more self-aware and then, you know, and then to make choices and let ourselves be, you know, free ourselves from those emotional patterns of behavior. So how, and, how does the breathing fall into your work, the pranayama breathing techniques, and how do you how do you blend that in? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, certainly similar to what you just said, and and you know, I've I've studied yoga for years before I started studying 
energy medicine. And so learned all of those, those same um, tenets that you just mentioned. Um, but one of the things that I, that I didn't learn that, that I have since um, come to understand is that the breathing practices is one of the bridges between the unconscious and the conscious minds. And so it's one of the only things that, well, some of the advanced yogis can control other physiological things, but it's one of the only physiological um, movements in the body that we can both control with our conscious mind and that take care of themselves if we don't think about them at all. And what the breath does is it's mapping your unconscious. So if you, and, and as you start to practice pranayama, you start to watch how you breathe and how you breathe is showing you basically a map of your unconscious, of where you are stuck, of what you're holding on to. And one of the things that happens with trauma oftentimes is we, lo we, we lose our breath, right? <gasps> That's what happens, right? You, you stop breathing. And then you might start again, but now anytime you breathe through your mouth, this I learned from you. So I'm gonna say that. Anytime you breathe through your mouth, you're eliciting a stress response in the body because you're breathing into the top of the lungs instead of the lower lungs, which engage the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the, the rest and digest. So you stop breathing, you start to come into stress response, and then all of these little raggedy bits of the breath are informing where you're still not calm where you're still like you can watch someone breathe when they're not paying attention to you and you see if they're like <sighs> all those little chatters are little um disruptions you could equate them to the tears in the aura if your breath is is ragged it's showing you that there is still trauma and that there's still stress and the way to start to smooth those out, the way the breath works is they, it starts to smooth those responses out in the nervous system, in the unconscious. And so it starts to clear as well some of those traumas. So that's one of the techniques that we use quite a lot in this book. Um, and, and actually one of your big contributions to this book is to bring the Brahmari humming in as a trauma response tool. That bringing that gentle vibration, which smooths out the little tears in the breath, which smooths out the tears in the Tarpaka Kapha, which smooths out these instabilities. And so that we start to breathe in this smooth way all the way around the cert without these big pauses. And that brings calm to the nervous system. And the calmer the nervous system is, then all of these other things get to release from it because you're not gripping on. Everything is released, everything is smoothed out, and everything comes back into this homeostasis. So it's sort of like doing those figure eights on your aura. You're doing with the breathing, you're sort of patching up those holes in the in the field, the pranamaya kosha, in fact, right? So Absolutely, yeah. I've never said it like that, but I think that's exactly right. You're smoothing out the, the, that kosha, absolutely. Wow. I love that. So um, um, is there anything else that you feel like you would like to share about your book and your work? I mean, I definitely let everybody know the book is called The Energy to Heal, Find Lasting Freedom from Stress and Trauma Through Energy Medicine Yoga. You gotta, you gotta get the book, the book is just released. Um, Lauren, is there anything you'd like to just tell us in conclusion? Maybe give us your website, how to get a hold of you as well. Give us that kind of information as well. Yeah, so um, you can find everything, you can find the book, um, and if you um, buy the book, I'm not sure exactly when this podcast is being released, but it doesn't actually matter. I'm teaching a, a free class on May 8th um, in support of the book. So if you buy the book, you can go to the website and put it in and we'll give you a link to the class. And no matter when you buy the book, that class is always going to be available. And it's a heart activation class. We're really excited about it. It's a really beautiful way to start to, um, to, start to prepare yourself to do this work. And the work is really gentle. I think that's what I wanna say, is the work is gentle and loving. This is not shock therapy. This is the gentle response to all of the, the shocks that you've had in your life. This is a way to, to nurture yourself through these, to get to a place where you're free. That's really the goal, is to be free. And so um, 
so that's so that's there and then the companion course will come out in june and all of that is at energymedicineyoga.net or emyoga.net and i'm on you know all of the social pieces as well and you know there's there's just so many tools that you can use that are really simple and i think i want to i want to leave you with one i know i've given you so many tools today and so i hope this doesn't feel overwhelming but this is one of the most powerful things that you can do to either stop yourself going into a stress response, to come down from a stress response if you've already gone there, and to reprogram that limbic loop that we talked about, that PTSD, where you think, you even just can think of a trigger and you can go back into your um, situation. Anything that you're going through, here it is. It's so easy. Please remember this. One hand over the forehead, like you're taking your temperature. In the book, I explain what we're doing here. We're holding a set of points called the neurovascular reflex points. What you're doing is you're keeping the blood in the forebrain so that you can think critically and intelligently and creatively, which is what goes out the door when that tiger starts chasing you. This is the way to rewrite any situation. So if you've gone through a breakup or a firing or a loss or a grief or anything, and you just can't stop thinking about it, I'm not going to tell you to stop thinking about it. Keep thinking about it, but put your hand over your forehead and you're going to notice that while you're thinking about it, you start to calm down. You start to get more clear and that your thinking about it starts to be more easeful and less triggery. So if you only take one thing away today, take this, share it with people. We need to bring the temperature down of the whole world right now and a part of that is coming out of our stress out of our trauma hurt people hurt people so we have to heal our own pain so that we stop perpetuating that pain on either ourself or on others so i i just encourage you to just dip your toe into this work because we need you to do this work because we are all in this together and we all want to be in this place together in joy and beauty and compassion and love and generosity. That is our birthright. That's what we could have and what we can have and what we will have if we can just commit to releasing the junk that has stopped us from getting there before. Lauren Walker, so, so beautifully said. Thank you so, so much. It's been really great. I think everyone's just going to love this. Um, once again, the book is called The Energy to Heal by Lauren Walker. It's out now. Go get it. And we would just love, love to have you back. So hopefully we'll make that happen soon. That would be great. Thank you so much. I always enjoy speaking with you. I always learn so much from you as well. So anytime I will be back here in a heartbeat. We'll make that happen for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.